This man's name is Pierre. He is the personal chef of a French aristocrat named the Duke of Chamfort. Pierre was a widower that had been working for years in the Duke's palace with his son, Benjamin. Amid cooking, the Duke's servant named Hyacinth came to check their work and conveyed the message from the Duke, saying that the guests in the palace liked the food that Pierre had cooked for them. He even asked Pierre to cook some more food for them. To satisfy the Duke and his guests, he ordered the chefs to deliver a new dish he named Le Delicious, or in English, Delicious. In the 18th century, there were many ways that nobles showed how rich and classy they were, from wearing nice clothes to building luxurious palaces to showing how good their private chef's cooking was. When the guests were eating, the Duke called Pierre to receive some comments from the guests. Most of them said that the dishes were magnificent until one guest. Unfortunately, he said that the new dish was ridiculous. It shouldn't be served for humans, but rather for pigs. Hearing that insult made all the guests laugh. Feeling ashamed, the Duke yelled at Pierre and asked him to kneel and apologize. But as a chef, Pierre had his pride. He did not accept that his cooking was insulted. Even though he had served for many years, instead of apologizing, he chose to leave the palace. He and Benjamin returned to his father's house. At night, when they arrived, it turned out that his father's house had been partially destroyed. His father's neighbor, Jacob, said that a few months ago, Pierre's father had died due to a serious illness. The poor, who used to come to ask for bread, were disappointed. Since the death of Pierre's father, they couldn't get free food anymore. They looked for food all around the house, causing all the damage. Since they have no place to sleep tonight, Pierre and his son had to sleep in a makeshift place. The next day after cleaning up, a man came to eat at Pierre's house. In the past, Pierre's house was known as a place to rest and a place to eat for tired travelers. Usually, they would pay for the food. Benjamin was the one cooking for the man because Pierre was busy in the warehouse. In the warehouse, Pierre was approached by a woman named Louise. She told him that she was also a cook and all the cooks in this country must have known about Pierre's greatness. That morning, when her friend told her that Pierre had just stopped working, she immediately did the same so she could learn from him. Unfortunately, without any hesitation, Pierre refused to teach Louise anything. That night, while they were eating, Benjamin asked why his father didn't apply to be a personal chef at another noble's palace. He was sure that once the nobles tried his dishes, they would love them and would hire him right away. Pierre replied that he had been working in the Duke's kitchen for decades, and for him, that place was his home. He would never want to work in someone else's kitchen. He was mad at the Duke but if the Duke wanted him to work back at his palace, he would return to that place. The next morning, Pierre saw Louise in his warehouse. She begged him to teach her to cook like him. She didn't mind paying for it as long as he accepted her as his disciple. Initially, Pierre never wanted to accept her as his disciple since, at that time, a woman was not supposed to be a chef, but her persistence amazed him. He decided to let her become his disciple. Day by day, Louise continued to learn to serve the guests, helping to wash and take care of Pierre's farm, until one day, they caught the orphanage children stealing flour. Pierre was not angry. He instead said that the next day, he would do what his father always did, which was to distribute free bread to the orphanage. Hearing that, Louise smiled. While making bread, Pierre asked her why she lied to him. He knew from the way Louise walked, she was not a cook. From the way he observed, there were only two possibilities, either she was a noble or a prostitute. Cornered, Louise finally confessed that she was a prostitute. The moment she knew that her job was wrong, she decided to repent and try to learn to be a great chef to prove that she deserved a second chance. Hearing her honesty, Pierre was touched. They then went to the forest there. Pierre told Louise to look for some edible plants. When they got home, Pierre explained which plants are edible and which are poisonous. At night, Pierre explained to Louise the various types of spices and cooking ingredients. Pierre explained that as a cook, Louise had to train her taste buds to be able to distinguish certain kinds of ingredients. He then asked her to close her eyes and gave her some ingredients for her to taste. At that moment, Pierre was fascinated by the beauty of Louise's face. He was carried away and almost kissed her lips, but suddenly, Louise opened her eyes and immediately pointed a knife at Pierre's neck. The next morning, Pierre saw Louise who was serving two guests. To make things less awkward, Pierre tried to apologize to her, saying that he was carried away last night and promised that the same incident would never happen again. Fortunately, Louise forgave him and agreed to forget about last night's incident. A few days later, Hyacinth visited Pierre's house to deliver a message from the Duke. The Duke planned to arrange a feast to welcome his new friends from the city of Paris and said that he would hold the event there in Pierre's house. 
Hyacinth added that the Duke would order his maids and servants to redecorate the place so that it would become a luxurious place worthy of nobles to eat. Before he left the place, Hyacinth asked Pierre to cook his best dishes because if he could satisfy the Duke, he might consider letting him return to the palace and work as his personal chef again. Hearing that, Pierre accepted the request. The next day, with enthusiasm, Pierre explained the concept of decoration and what dishes he would serve at the feast later to Benjamin, Louise, and Jacob. Soon, the maids and servants from the palace came with the ingredients Pierre had ordered before. One week passed. The Duke's bodyguard visited him again and gave him a letter saying that the Duke wanted to advance the feast to the next day. That news shocked him and made him pessimistic. He wasn't sure if he could prepare everything by tomorrow, but confidently, Louise assured that by the next day, everything would be ready. When the delegation left, Pierre got mad at Louise, he said that she shouldn't interfere because she was not the one cooking the dishes, but him. In the middle of the debate, suddenly, they heard the sound of barrels falling. When they came to check, they were shocked to see Jacob crushed by the barrels, killing him with serious injuries. After Jacob's funeral, Pierre ordered the rest to get back to their work. They must immediately complete the preparations for the smooth running of the event the next day. Even at night, Pierre was still cooking. He doesn't care anymore that the kitchen was a mess as long as he could finish the preparations before the Duke and his friends arrived. When he checked the warehouse, he found Benjamin sitting alone. He asked his father why he kept cooking even though they had just lost Jacob that afternoon. Pierre said that even though he didn't cry, it didn't mean that he wasn't sad. He said that no matter what happened to them, they had to keep working because there was not much time left for them to finish the job. While arguing, Benjamin accidentally nudged the oil and caused a fire. They tried to save as much as they could and finally managed to put out the fire. After the fire was put out, Louise treated Pierre's hand which had been burnt during the incident. Pierre was sad about this condition because he thought that he wouldn't be able to finish the preparations on time. It would be near impossible for him to cook because of his injury. Louise tried to cheer him up and said that there were still nine more hours before the Duke came. All he needed to do was to believe in her. The next morning, both Pierre and Louise started cooking together. When he saw Louise seriously listening to his instructions, he was amazed by her once again. Soon after that, the maids from the palace came. They started decorating Pierre's yard immediately. When everyone was busy, Louise secretly put poison in one of the dishes. Just as the preparations for the event were finished, the group arrived at Pierre's house, but strange enough, they didn't stop. Right after, Pierre received a letter containing the cancellation of the party. Before that, the Duke thought that Pierre's house was a decent place, but it turned out to be a small hut. He was embarrassed and chose another place. Louise was very angry, she was angry that she ruined the decoration, but suddenly her anger immediately changed to worry, seeing Benjamin almost eat the food she put poison in before. She then threw it away. Seeing Louise's strange attitude rose Pierre's suspicion. Inside the house, when Pierre was alone with Louise, he again forced her to confess. Because she was cornered, Louise finally admitted the secret that she had been hiding all this time. The reason Louise wanted to become Pierre's disciple was actually to kill the person who had destroyed her life. Long ago before meeting Pierre, Louise was the wife of a wealthy nobleman and her husband had been business partners with the Duke of Chamfort for a long time, until one day, the Duke fell in love with Louise and then seduced her. She rejected his love and made him angry. In desperation, he killed Louise's husband and even took away all of her belongings. Since that time, she had revenge on the Duke and tried everything he could to avenge him. The story made Pierre very disappointed and drove her away from his house. The next day, Benjamin tried to stop Louise from leaving while Pierre, whose heart was still disappointed, wanted to go somewhere to calm down. Unfortunately, because he couldn't ride a horse, he instead fell and was dragged by his horse. As a result of the incident, he was badly injured. Louise felt pity for him and decided not to leave and stayed to take care of Pierre, until one day, when his wounds had healed, Pierre heard a ruckus from outside the house. When he checked, there were a lot of soldiers eating inside and outside of his house. Suddenly Louise showed up and told him that just in the morning, a group of soldiers passing by asked for food. She then took the initiative to cook a recipe that Pierre taught her. It turned out that the soldiers liked it. They even asked for more food and paid more money. Because of the hassle, Louise had to hire orphanage children to help her. After the soldiers left, Louise said that selling delicious food turned out to be more profitable instead of just cooking for the aristocrats. She suggested Pierre open a place where they could serve people food like the aristocrats. 
Pierre didn't agree and immediately kicked Louise out of there, but when Benjamin told him that it was Louise who had taken care of his wounds, Pierre was silent. Benjamin also said that that might be their chance to avenge the Duke. Pierre had to prove that he could make more money than his salary as a personal chef in the Duke's palace. Benjamin believed that one day, people will definitely follow his smart idea to open a dining place. When Pierre heard that, he finally agreed. Two days later, they had finished decorating the dining area. Pierre asked Louise to write down today's menu list. To avoid visitors' boredom, he decided to change the menu every day. Suddenly, Benjamin ran towards them, yelling that a visitor was coming. Since then, they had started their business. One month later, Pierre's business was getting busier. One day, Hyacinth came. He went there to collect tax money from Pierre's dining place. Suddenly, Louise entered the place. Afraid that Hyacinth would recognize her, she immediately covered her face with the basket in her hand and walked away from there. Outside, she sat silently. All this time, she had tried to forget his revenge on the Duke, but when she saw the Duke's servant sitting there, immediately, her desire for revenge rose again. The next day, Louise who didn't want to tarnish Pierre's good name if someday she ended up killing the Duke decided to go away. She also left a farewell letter for Pierre. When Pierre read the letter, he was confused. For days he couldn't focus on cooking and often makes mistakes. He cooked the wrong orders, the food he cooked didn't taste good, and the restaurants started losing visitors. One day, Pierre told Benjamin that their money was no longer enough to buy groceries. Benjamin suggested his father start focusing on his job. People came to their place to get some food, not to watch an old man upset because of a woman. At night, Pierre visited the Duke's palace. There, he told the Duke that since he resigned from his job in the palace, he had opened a dining place, but it has been days since he got many visitors. The Duke insulted him, saying that his idea was nonsense. Everyone in France knew that good food can only be enjoyed by nobles. An ordinary person would never be able to understand how delicious food is. Frustrated with his condition, Pierre decided to apologize to the Duke. He then invited the Duke to come to his place to eat the day after tomorrow. The Duke agreed on one condition. After he fulfilled Pierre's invitation, Pierre had to close his business and work for him again. The next morning, from the information he got, Pierre finally found Louise's whereabouts. She had become a nun. When they met, Pierre said that he had invited the Duke to his place. He said that they could poison the Duke together. He didn't care anymore if his reputation was destroyed or he would be sentenced to death. For him, the most important thing was that Louise stayed by his side. Because since she was not around, his heart felt empty. Hearing Pierre poured all his heart content, Louise was touched. She decided to return home with Pierre. Together with his wife, the Duke went to Pierre's house. Seeing how empty Pierre's place made him smile happily. Soon, Pierre welcomed and invited his former master in. He brought an appetizer for the two of them, namely the Delicious, the food that the nobles insulted long ago. The Duke was offended but when he saw his wife enjoyed the food, he was forced to stay and eat them. Suddenly, when he was just about to dig in, Hyacinth told him that outside, lots of people came and sat on the empty benches. Because of his ego, he refused to eat along with them, but when he was about to leave Louise suddenly appeared. He was shocked to see her, but to avoid suspicion from his wife, he tried his best to maintain his expression. Louise then said that she was going to poison his food, but she thought that an arrogant person like him deserved a social punishment, so he would know how it felt to be humiliated in front of many people. Pierre then showed the invitation that he handed out at the market yesterday, the invitation meant to invite everyone who wanted to have lunch together with the Duke. The Duke was embarrassed to the point of almost crying. He swore that one day, he would repay what Pierre had done to him. Hearing his threat, Louise dared him to do all his threats so that she could report all the Duke's corrupt deeds to the King of France. Louise said that she had the evidence that could sentence the Duke to death. Louise then pulled the white wavy wig from the Duke's head. When the Duke was about to slap Louise, Pierre immediately catched his hand and told him to kneel and apologize for all the sins he had committed to Louise. Speechless, his whole body stiffened because he was too embarrassed. While holding back the tears, the Duke ran away screaming. Looking at how despicable the nobleman he had served for so many years was, Hyacinth was shocked. Amid the hesitation, two visitors who just arrived asked him if there was still a table for them. At that very moment, he realized that all this time, he had been serving the wrong person. 
He finally took off the wig from his head and then began to help serve the people who came. Since then, the first ever restaurant in France was open for business.